20, to the 10, to the 5, touch, down, hit the horn. You know, the cool thing when we come in the film room every week is that I always learn something. Uh, and so this week I wanted to start with what is the definition of a safety? <laughs> because I, I want to show this play here at the end because from from our perspective up top, it, it looked as if Dom Williams clearly has a safety here, but it's really, it, it, it's become more of a subjective sort of call, hasn't it, in college football? Yeah, a little bit. I think, number one, I think you can kind of see here the, the linesman makes the call here that's really, you know, he's on about the 12 or 15 yard line and, right. and it's really difficult for him to make that spot if he's 12 yards out of position. Um, but as you said, I think I think what happens sometimes is a player gets contacted and then if he gets loose, then he reestablishes himself behind the line of scrimmage, which I think is clearly what happened on that play. Um, but they said that there was forward progress stopped and so they said it wasn't a safety. I obviously didn't agree with the call. Right. You know, I asked, I asked for a timeout and uh, for them to review it and they wouldn't review it. and. It is what it is. Because it looked, I, I, I thought maybe they were trying to say, okay, here you see the contact from Dom. He's in the field of play. There is contact. But as you said, he, he gets loose. Yeah. And, and Stone's clearly in the end zone at that point on yeah. his own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a safety to me. Right. Smells like a safety to me. <laughs> right, but right, right. I guess that's not a safety. All right, from the start now, the Horn Frogs here. Uh, you can see SMU takes this uh, opening drive. They, they're able to punch it in, get a, uh, a field goal to start. Uh, nice way to start for them. It was. Yeah, it was yeah. a good drive. They did a nice job. They, you know, they ran stretch uh, from from yeah. the pistol a lot and created a, you know an extra gap. And you know, it's tough playing a three man front when you when you see the stretch. Like they made, it creates just a lot of a lot of grass, and and I thought our guys did a good job of adjusting, but certainly early in the game it gave us some problems. You kind of adjusted on the fly, but in in the second half, especially when when Coach Gillespie had a chance to go to the board, you really see the difference against that yeah, stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just had to get our linebackers playing a little bit differently, make a couple of adjustments, and and slow those guys down. Some um, what happens is when you see that stretch, you know, that's a fast flow to those guys, and they've got to do a good job of playing the cut back and staying back there. So. Um, you know, we made the adjustments, and our guys certainly played it better. You know, one of the things, too, that you wanted to do coming into this week was uh, those, those tight ends have been really good for you all year, and you did early on here. This was a quick first quarter, by the way, down to 16 seconds left in the quarter. You score here on this touchdown pass to Jared Wiley. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this uh, Jared does a nice job here. We kind of wanted it to look like a screen, and Jared does a nice job setting it up and slipping the, the nickel player. and, and uh, you know, really good throw, and it really ended up being a pretty easy little touchdown for us. Yeah, you had back-to-back 10-play -back drives that resulted in touchdowns uh, to the tight end. Here's another one to Wiley. This one from two yards out to uh, to Chandler, who, by the way, I thought again this week mixed it up a ton, found a bunch of receivers. Yeah, he did. You know, a bunch of different guys made plays, caught the ball. Um, you know, that's kind of what we are right now. We're, we're a little bit receiver by committee, and, and which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, it would be good for somebody to kind of step up and assume the role of being the go-to guy. I think we have some some players that have the potential to do it. We just hadn't done it quite yet. But uh, but the good thing is we have a lot of guys that can make plays, and, and they're all bring something different to the table. Here's uh, Amani Bailey's 24-yard touchdown run. This, to me, is our Texas Health Impact play of the game. You see it here. Uh, this was kind of a backbreaker, I felt like, because your offense had leaned on them so much. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think, I think you know, it's tough when – when you can kind of start to, to feel the game starting to shift a little bit. And, and, you know, we were able to sustain some drives, keep their defense on the field for longer periods of time and, and start to wear them down a little bit. Does, is he surprising even you, Amani Bailey? You know, not really. I think last year, there were times last year, you know, I, I kind of thought, wow, this guy's going to be a really, really good player. And, and when he had opportunities last year, he always showed up. I mean, that was the thing about him. And he's such a great practice player. I mean, that's, that's what makes him so good in the games. He just practices so hard. He's always available, does a great job taking care of himself off the field and, and making sure that he's available every day to practice and he just gets better because of it. You mentioned Josh Newton's interception. Here it is in the great return afterwards, followed by another one. I thought it was a great break here. Uh, Bud Clark on the ball to come up with that pick in the end. Zone. Yeah, yeah, throwing a little corner out here and I thought really Preston Stone made a nice throw through the ball on time and and uh, Bud just made such a great play on the ball, kind of, uh, you know, played over the top of it and, and came in and really made a nice play on the ball. All right, focus turns to West Virginia. We'll preview the Mountaineers real quick after this time. Old Trapper Beefs. 
tough snacks. Out here, nothing comes easy. That's why you gotta be tough. My truck, it's tough. My crew, definitely tough. But Old Trapper taught me the value of tenderness. Old Trapper, what's your beef? Oh, it's a puppy. <laughs> Welcome back in here to the Frog Film Room. Uh, we said every, each week, Old Trapper bringing us uh, 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 what's your beef question. Uh, it, but we, you know, we're not getting into stuff like that. We're getting into the real important stuff. And I got a question from an uh, audience member who sent a tweet to me. He said, what was Sonny Dykes' first car? I thought that's a good question. <laughs> you know what it was? It was a, Datsun, a 1980 Datsun 310GX, yeah. which was car and driver's ugliest car of the decade. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a bad looking car. It was my cousin's car. I think it had 250,000 plus miles on it when I got it. Yeah. And you know the great thing about that car, you could, you could drain the oil and run it, and transmission fluid didn't need anything. It would it'd just keep running. <laughs> what color was it? Good? It was uh, like a puke blue. <laughs> I love it. It I was not, it. it was, yeah, it was not a, it was not a great car. <laughs> I, I, I love it. Um, uh, well, speaking of blue, the guys in blue and gold come to town uh, this weekend, Saturday night. Uh, another guy that you've coached with, Neil Brown. Good win for them last week against Texas Tech. First time he'd been able to beat them as a, as a head coach. I know that was important to him. These, these guys feel like they're starting to put it together. Yeah, they are. No, they are. You have a lot of momentum. You know, got a big win against Pittsburgh uh, and then got the win last week against Texas Tech. And, you know, you can tell they're starting to, to gain some confidence. And, you know, it's a good football team. I mean, the one thing about West Virginia, they're going to play hard. Yeah. They're always going to be tough. They're built the same. I mean, they're going to, they got a big back. They're going to run the ball. Um, and that's kind of what they want to do is establish a run game and, you know, chip away at you and, and really play a physical brand of football. It always seems like they've got defensive linemen, too. And that's the hardest position to recruit. West Virginia always has. They do. They've, they've always done a nice job through the years yeah. of finding guys, and, and they're always good players. And as I said earlier, what makes them different is they just play so hard. They're tough, and they're physical, and they – you know, they, they, they play with great pride. You looking forward to a night game, big crowd? Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I, I always like early games. Yeah. Just uh, I like to get up and play. But, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a great crowd. And, man, just the fans have been fantastic this year. I mean, showing up. I think we, I just saw the other day we're number one in the country in terms of capacity crowds. Right. Uh, um, you know, I think we're 108% of capacity. Yeah. So I uh, appreciate the fans and students especially for showing up and, and being such great fans. All right, it's going to be fun. Coming up on uh, Saturday night, Horn Frogs in West Virginia at 7 o'clock. We'll be back here next week with another edition of Frog Films for you here from the film room where the head coach will learn something again next week. Thanks for joining us.